Now, as with everything in the aquarium hobby, water flow goes through trends. So there was a trend of closed loop water flow where they'll get big powerful pumps underneath and the water will suck from underneath the aquarium and return back through a closed loop. So there's no pumps in the tank. That's certainly been a trend. Then um, a very popular trend that still persists today is you'll get power heads, you'll put them on the back wall of the aquarium, getting this sort of kinetic energy. Now kinetic energy is something that's super important particularly if you're running minimal amounts of water flow. Because what kinetic energy is, is you put your pumps in the same direction, so the movement of the water creates the movement of the water. Now, another fashion is where people will put, say, a pump on this end and a pump on that end, and they're basically fighting each other. So if you're gonna do it that way, where you're having counter currents, that's okay but you must have a lot more water flow because you're really using the energy of the pump to actually provide water flow. You're not using the movement of the water to create the water flow. Now, none of these techniques are necessarily right or necessarily wrong because some corals like different conditions. So you might create a condition that's perfect for a animal that loves high water flow, or you might create a condition for animals that like low water flow. So none of these techniques are right or wrong. Now, blowing across the reef, particularly if you've got a changing water current, is a great idea, but very often if you're blowing across the reef, your corals won't really open up. Because if you're blowing straight into a coral, then the harshness of the um, water flow blowing straight into it will generally stress the coral and you'll find that they either won't open or they'll only open on one side or you may even damage the coral due to the the aggressive water flow from one side now you doing it this way is great because the pressure is coming that way so you're not aiming at any corals at all it's going across the surface and creating plenty of agitation I'm not a fan of water flow through the back of the reef if you don't have surface agitation. If you've got surface agitation, then cool, put water flow at the bottom of the reef. But if you don't have enough water flow, you really need to angle it at the surface because the agitation of the surface is what's going to lower your surface tension, increase your dissolved oxygen level, increase your redox potential and so forth. So most people want about 20 times an hour water flow in their aquarium, particularly for a reef aquarium and trying to make sure that your pumps are not blowing at your coral is very important. So there are other pumps available like gyros that blow straight across the surface that are really quite nice, but it's really a matter of looking at the corals that you have and also being able to respond to your coral. So you might set up what you think is a wonderful water flow, but then once you actually start putting your corals in there, due to the corals you're selecting, they may not be happy with the water flow that you've put in. So having water flow that you can move around to suit the coral is a really good idea because you need to either put corals in that suit the water flow you have or you need to be able to adjust the water flow for the corals that you have. And with a lot of the power heads that are available now, they've got speed controls. You can turn them up, you can turn them down. You can make them so they're powerful or not powerful. You can make them so they can pulse or wave the availability of um, pumps these days is just so amazing. And now with these wide um, mouth ones, they're also nowhere near as aggressive as the old spout that would shoot out 5,000 litres an hour of very aggressive water flow. The puck ones or the, the wide mouth ones, the water flow is much more gentle. It's a lot better for the corals. So anyway, at the end of the day, You've got to look at each piece, look at how the piece is responding, and you need to be able to either move the piece to somewhere that you think it's going to be happy as far as water flow is concerned, or you need to be able to alter the water flow to make sure that the corals are happy. And that's another reason why grouping corals is very successful, because you can put SPS corals in one area where there's maybe a lot of water flow, then you could put morphs or corellas or zoos in an area where there's not as much water flow. 
So grouping coral is definitely something absolutely to look at. But though there's no right or wrongs, trying to make sure you've got at least 20 times an hour water flow, trying to make sure that your surface is very well educated, very well agitated, and trying to make sure that you're not blasting straight at corals. And other than that, trends will continue changing. You can use the inline pumps, you can use the old spouts, you can use the new wave pumps, you can use the gyro style pumps. There really isn't a right or wrong. So if you put a little note down on the bottom of this video of any water flow do's or don'ts that you have. Do you have rules that you work with? How many times an hour do you find successful? What pumps have you found are great? And what pumps do you find are terrible? Let us know what you think.